It's all too common to lose items into the abyss. Phone, wallets, keys, so many things fall between those cracks in the seats. The solution? a foam noodle. Just like the colorful pool kind, these are pipe insulation. You can find these at hardware stores and they're so cheap. And you can find them in different sizes. Just cut to fit and install this to fill that gap between the seats. I love this. It's so discreet, you don't even notice it's there. Look, now there's nowhere for anything to fall. Keeping your tires in good condition is so important for road safety. And the depth of your tread is an indicator of the life of the tire. This process is really affordable. It only costs a penny. This couldn't get any simpler. You just stand the coin up in the tread and Lincoln's head will be your measuring tool. If the tread depth doesn't go from the bottom of the coin past Lincoln's head, it's time to look at getting new tires. Do this to take some measurements at different points around the tire and repeat this around the car for all your tires. This is also a good time to check your tires overall for any cracks or nails, anything that could be a potential problem. I just had my oil changed, but then the warning light came. Here's how to reset the change oil warning yourself. For most vehicles, first turn the car on without starting the engine. Then quickly press the gas pedal to the floor three to five times. For some newer vehicles, the reset's gonna be in the settings in your dash, so check your manual. Now when I start the car, that warning is gone. Yes. Keeping your wiper blades maintained can make all the difference for safe driving. Inspect the blades you're looking for cracks, tears, or if it's hanging off, it definitely needs to be replaced. The various sizes and types are regularly stocked at auto parts stores, or you can easily order online. Keep in mind your vehicle may require two different sizes for the passenger and driver's side. For the most part, blades are universal, but you may need the included adapter for your vehicle. Wiper blades should be easily removable. If it's your first time, be sure to follow the instructions. Wiper blades should last around 12 months, but you can find more premium brands built for severe weather that'll last longer. And if your vehicle has one, don't forget the rear. Keeping your windows clean will help them work better and last longer. Washer fluid is something easy that you can fill up yourself. Locate and fill up the correct tank. Always use a funnel to avoid spills and make sure it's clean. Never fill with plain water. Washer fluid is designed to be more effective and not freeze. Over time, dirt and residue builds up on these blades and they may not necessarily need to be replaced. So if they're in good condition, they just need to be cleaned. You can use a good quality window cleaner and just wipe those blades clean. This gets rid of all that dirt and residue built up on these blades. That's what was leaving all those streaks on your windshield. Those blades are extra dirty. You can actually use a little bit of rubbing alcohol, getting these wiper blades just like new. If you see large cracks or part of the blade is hanging off, it's just time for a new pair. When you're done with the blades, give your window a good clean too. Good as new, working like a charm. I like to keep a pretty hefty power bank that's powerful enough to charge all my devices. And since this one's dead, I like to keep it charged while I'm on the go. I can charge that battery pack from my alternator while I drive. Full and power stations are becoming more and more popular, especially for older vehicles. Whether it's something fun like a tailgate or trying to get work done on the road, having extra power can be a real game changer. These batteries can be charged off your alternator while your car is running or charge it up in the garage overnight and the next day you'll have an all day battery supply. Some units will even integrate solar for true sustainable power. This is connecting to solar. A big unit like this can be a little pricey, but you can find a variety of capacities to fit your budget and your needs. I had some friends and their dogs in my car, and now look what was left behind. Getting rid of hair and lint from your car can be tough, but I have a few tips to help you out. Conventional lint rollers do work great, but they may not be ideal for bigger messes. A metal lint remover is gonna be ideal for some fabric upholstery. This is gonna be ideal for upholstery like this that's a little rougher and prone to lint. For smoother upholstery, try a squeegee. You'll also need a spray bottle of distilled water. Give that surface a light mist, don't soak it. Now squeegee in one direction. Have your vacuum on standby to suck up that hair. A common issue that comes up is your headlights or taillights going out. Luckily, for many vehicles, you can fix that yourself. For many vehicles, it should be really easy to access your lights right under the hood. You can find so many resources online and videos to help you access instructions of how to remove and replace your lights. Once you've accessed and removed the bulb, the number and the type should be listed right on there. Auto parts stores can be your best friend to replace these bulbs and they can be so inexpensive. If you are experiencing issues, take a look at the wires. If you notice anything wrong with the terminals or fraying, you may wanna get it looked at by a professional. When you use your turn signal and there's that fast clicking sound, yeah, that one, usually means you need to get the bulb replaced. Rear lights and blinkers, also easy to replace, but many you have to access from inside the trunk. Mine is on the outside. You know me, I love to learn how to do new things, especially if it saves me money. And these only cost me five bucks. 
first I was intimidated, but now I am not. Here's how to make your vacation about the journey and the destination. An RV rental can be a more affordable way to have a home on the road. You don't even need to pay for campsites. Save even more money by boondocking. There are online resources and apps to help you plan routes and find places to camp overnight that cost you nothing. If you are renting an RV, plan on having it a day or two before and after your trip. That way you have time to get used to the vehicle, load it up, and then clear it out. With this home on wheels, there's no expensive hotel I need to get back to. Being prepared for a road trip means being prepared for emergencies. There's a few things you wanna make sure you have and know how to do before you hit the road. Pack extra water, that way you can stay hydrated and use it for your car if it gets overheated. An emergency roadside kit, some gloves, those come in handy, and some tie down straps are also great to have. One of the most common things that can happen is a flat tire, and trust me, you can fix it yourself. Safety is the first concern, so pull over somewhere secure and turn on your hazards. Every vehicle is different, so make sure you locate your user manual or download the proper instructions to your phone. I'm lucky I have a spare tire right on the back of my vehicle, but yours may be underneath or inside the trunk. Prepare and make sure that spare is full of air. Also keep an old towel available, that way you can kneel down and protect yourself from the ground. And for nighttime emergencies, have a flashlight and extra batteries. There's no need to be intimidated when it comes to changing your tire. With the right tools, you can get the job done. Checking your tire pressure is gonna be really important. Check inside your car door. It will tell you the recommended pressure for your tires. And then you can usually set the air compressor to just match that and it'll do it automatically. The right tire pressure will give you the best fuel economy on your trip. Here's how to quickly cool off your car interior. Start with rolling down that passenger window. Once it's rolled down, just fan the door about eight to 10 times. That'll push all that hot air out of the car. There's a few things you can do to prevent the interior car from getting too hot in the first place. After you park, turn your wheel upside down. That'll keep the top part in the shade. If you can, also crack your windows about an inch. Keep a large towel in your car to cover your seats, console, and dash. Believe it or not, the air outside's gonna be cooler than the air inside. And with these tips, now we're ready to drive. Icy windshields are a common winter hassle. There's a simple DIY solution to de-icing your windshield. To one part water, add two parts isopropyl alcohol. Now just add a few drops of dish soap. Couldn't be easier, and this is stuff you probably already have in a cabinet. Spray this on an icy windshield to help it melt away fast. You can also apply this the night before to keep ice from building up. Another homemade de-icer is just white distilled vinegar diluted with water. Another great solution is a cover to keep your windshield clear. Just make sure to take this off before you hit the road. Instead of fighting with a solid slab of ice, use this solution to melt ice quickly. This one's frozen solid. This one is breaking right apart. Replacing your air filter is a part that'll help your engine keep running smoothly for years to come, and you can easily do it yourself. Typical air filters will last 15 to 30,000 miles or replace once a year, or you can always check the packaging for specific instructions. Vehicle manuals are a perfect place to start to learn where your air intake is and how to replace the filter. Just watch some tutorials and you'll be well on your way to doing it yourself. Most vehicles don't stop at the engine filter. You need cabin filters too. Cabin filters are for the air that circulates inside your vehicle. Yep, the stuff you're breathing. These come in all shapes and sizes, so make sure you purchase the correct ones for your vehicle. It's really easy. These filters are affordable. Feel so good to finish a project yourself. For those long trips, download podcasts and audiobooks. Those are gonna help pass the time way quicker than music. Downloading and setting your playlist in advance makes it a lot easier on the road. Even if you don't have service, you'll have plenty of content to listen to. You need an inverter. That way you can keep electronics charged on the go. No dead batteries here. I could not have a road trip without coffee, but it's also better to check out local restaurants and coffee shops along your journey. Taking a little break and supporting local. Road trips are way better if you make things easy and stay organized. Center console or seat back organizers keep everything accessible. A shower caddy is perfect in the car for those backseat passengers. All your snacks and drinks are right here. I mean, look how handy that is. No messes. You can share it. Would you like something? These suction cup organizers are also really great in the car. It's out of the way and it's a little bit of extra storage. Bring a tray or even a cookie sheet for in-car activities. That way, nothing falls underneath the seats. Something with a lip is so helpful. Keeps everything right here handy. And having a tray is great for in-car meals. If you're RVing or camping, access to power is definitely a luxury. Traditional generators require gas, they're noisy, and they put off fumes. Solar options are gonna give you all the power you need and they're completely silent. So if you're renting an RV, choose one with solar as an efficient source of power. If you're camping, portable panels will let you charge small electronics and light up camp at night. And even when the sun is down, a battery bank will give you power all through the night. For maximum efficiency, keep those panels clean and in direct sunlight. That means no parking in the shade. If your car has foggy headlights, we can fix that. 
Over time, the plastic gets weathered. The solution will make you smile. Yep, toothpaste. You'll need a clean microfiber rag and some elbow grease. Apply the toothpaste to the plastic in small circular motions. Just be sure to get that toothpaste only on the light and not on any paint. Put a liberal amount on there. You can let this sit on here for about five to 10 minutes before we clean it off. It helps if the toothpaste has baking soda in it or add some from your cabinet. To finish up, I've got a clean rag and I'm gonna wash everything down with some distilled water. Depending on your headlights, you may have to repeat about two or three times. And as a bonus while you're up here, you can clean bugs off your grill with a damp dryer sheet. To really transform older vehicles, look at aftermarket options. You can find affordable options to give you navigation, connect to your phone, all the multimedia experiences, and even backup cameras. Make sure the unit's compatible with your vehicle and of course, your phone system. And depending on your vehicle, many of these systems you can install yourself. If you're hesitant about the install, ask a friend or a family member who's tech and car savvy, they can help you out. Or just go with a professional install. The price and convenience could be worth it for you, especially for an upgrade like this. For vehicles without Bluetooth, a simple dongle can change your world. And of course, you want a good mounting system to keep that phone secure. I like a simple magnetic option, but clamping mounts may be a better fit for you. For these style holders, you usually need to install a magnet onto your phone. I actually prefer to just install it right inside my case, so that way I can keep it off my phone. Cars are notorious magnets for dust, lint, and hair. And mine's no exception, I got crumbs everywhere. To get every nook and cranny clean, all we need is a few brushes. You can use something like a crafting brush to get those vents clean, which is probably the hardest thing to clean in your car. A dry brush is great for dusting, but I like to add a little spray of a multi-purpose cleaner. This will help attract all those dust particles and actually clean. And it's nice to have different size brushes for different areas. For those smaller cracks and seals, you can use a makeup brush or a Q-tip. You. You know, sometimes just vacuuming isn't enough. So use the brush and vacuum technique. That'll get everything out of those crevices and the vacuum will suck it up. And a toothbrush works great for the seams and seats. Brushing will help loosen anything stuck in those seams that the vacuum can't get on its own. Traveling on winter roads means being prepared for ice and snow. Here's how to put chains on your tires. When you're purchasing chains, be sure you're getting the right size for your vehicle. Chain and cable type installation is gonna vary by manufacturer, so review the instructions. Be prepared with gloves and a small waterproof tarp for your knees. For rear wheel drive vehicles, you'll wanna put the chains on the back tires. For front and four wheel drive vehicles, the chains are gonna go on the front. For these cables, the first step is to drape them over the tire. Front of the cables gets tucked underneath the tire. I'm gonna move forward about a foot. Secure the inside of the cable first. Now tightly secure the outside. And for these, I just need to lock them into place. Only drive on chains in conditions where they're needed. It's a good idea to practice putting on chains before you go to an area they may be needed. Cables and chains will give you that extra traction for steering and braking in icy conditions. Modern vehicles are so smart. They have all these sensors that'll notify you if something needs your attention. Get familiar with the symbols on your dashboard instrument panel. They're all pretty much universal. So if something comes on, I don't have to panic. Of course, regular maintenance is gonna keep your car running better, longer, like keeping an eye on tire pressure before that indicator ever goes off. Of course, change your oil about every five to 10,000 miles, but know what your vehicle requires. If the check engine symbol comes on, there's usually a code associated with it to let you know exactly what's going on. Vehicles have a port that a computer can be plugged into that'll help diagnose problems. Here's my secret. If your check engine light comes on, take it to an automotive store. They have the reader that they can plug in, diagnose the problem, and give you a printout of exactly what's going on. And usually they'll do this for free. One thing a lot of people don't consider when they purchase a car is maintenance cost. So when you're looking for a vehicle, consider the cost to maintain it because it could be a lot more expensive than you think. Drive-through car washes are super convenient, but they're actually not the best when it comes to preserving your paint job. Those brushes can actually leave small scratches on your car and cause damage over time. So best to manual wash. Cleaning your car doesn't have to be a big chore. You can use a manual car wash like this or your driveway, of course. Instead of using a hose, which can be wasteful, conserve water by just filling up a bucket. Don't use household soaps and detergents. Instead, use a soap that's made for your car. Those are gonna do the best job preserving your paint and exterior. Don't use an old rag. These are gonna leave behind lint and residue on your vehicle. Instead, use a clean microfiber cloth. It's also good to make sure you're using a different rag on your tires than the rest of the vehicle. Winter is coming. Here are some items to have in your car to be safe and prepared. A good place to start is with tools and an emergency roadside kit. That way you have what you need for minor maintenance and repairs. You should also keep snacks and spare water there to keep you hydrated and nourished. Pack items to stay warm. 
emergency blankets are great. They're small and lightweight. That way, if the temperatures drop, you have what you need. As winter temperatures fluctuate, keep an eye on your tire pressure. I also like to keep cables or chains, so you're always ready for any winter road conditions. An ice scraper and small shovel can really come in handy. And I like to throw in a sturdy pair of gloves. Keep your phone charged in your car or bring a charged backup battery. And you can find some with built-in solar power. And another essential is a flashlight. And before you hit any winter roads, know your routes and check weather conditions. All prepared for my next adventure. Proper tire pressure ensures your vehicle's running safely and efficiently. Here's how to make sure you're getting the most from your tires. It's good to know how to do it yourself with a tire pressure gauge. This tiny affordable tool is so handy to keep in your car. Remove the cap and firmly press on the valve. This will give you a measurement of that tire's PSI. You'll know if your pressure is over or under based on the manufacturer's recommendation that should be listed on your door frame. You really want to keep an eye on pressure when temperatures change or you're moving in elevation. That way you may be able to catch a problem before your sensors do. I love a good campfire, but they require a lot of setup and maintenance. Propane campfires are an option to give you ambiance and warmth. In many locations, even when there's wood burning restrictions, you should still be able to use propane. This provides a safe alternative and those cozy benefits. The best part is there's no need to douse flames or smother embers. Camping doesn't have to be expensive. I borrowed this from a friend. If you're a casual camper, ask around. You may find everything you need. Thanks, Ryan. We're in the car out and about all day. This thing can come in real handy. In months where temps are scorching, keep some cold drinks. This is a go-to for grocery shopping to keep everything fresh on the drive home. Wheels and a handle, easy to get everything from the car to the fridge. I keep an insulated bag in my trunk all the time as a backup. And your cooler is not just for cold. If you're picking up hot food for dinner, keep it warm inside the cooler. Or you can go with the ultimate chill upgrade. Vehicle refrigerators are not just for RVs. If you're a parent always on the go because of your kids' sports and activities, this is for you. If you're working in your car all day, and of course for camping and road trips. And many even have a freezer function so your ice cream won't melt. And while you're driving around, this thing can be powered by a standard 12 volt charger. Unplug it when you're not driving and since it's insulated, everything should stay nice and cool in between stops. These portable fridges come in so many styles and sizes so you can find something that fits your budget and there's really affordable options out there. Hard water spots can get left behind by sprinklers and even after a car wash. Over time, it can become difficult to remove those spots, but you need one thing to fix it. Distilled white vinegar is what we need to take care of this problem. You can dilute that vinegar in a spray bottle with equal parts distilled water. Saturate the area with your vinegar and just let that sit. This works great all over your car exterior. Just make sure it doesn't sit too long. Wipe it down with a clean rag. Now it's time to get back out there and get it dirty again. Driving in winter can mean road delays and backups. Here's what to do if you're stuck during a winter storm. The most important thing is try to keep a full gas tank. Fuel up frequently and try not to drop below a half tank. If you are stopped, make sure it's somewhere safe and visible. Keep an extra supply of water and snacks inside your vehicle. If you are stopped for long periods of time, only run your engine about 10 minutes every hour. While the car is running, you can charge your phone, but Portable battery is a great backup. You can use this time to briefly crack a window and ventilate the car. If temperatures really get low, reach for hats, jackets, gloves, even an emergency blanket can really help. If you are stopped in heavy snow, make sure your tailpipe stays clear. Just remember, stay in your vehicle, stay warm, and stay safe. Propane is a go-to for the backyard and the great outdoors. But it's hard to know how full the tank is based on weight alone. Here's a trick to check those propane levels. First, make sure the tank is disconnected and completely closed. All you need is hot water and pour that down the side of the tank. Run your hand down the side and you should be able to feel where the level of the propane is. Propane quickly absorbs heat, so you should feel where the level is. This one's getting a little low. May need to stop by Strickland Propane soon. When it comes to road trips, two of the most important things are gas and bathrooms. It's a good idea to know what your vehicle's range is, but most cars have a distance till empty gauge to let you know how far you can go before you need to fill up. Plan stops ahead of time and find the best prices by using a gas app. It's nice to be able to not be surprised and save a little bit of money while you're on the road. It's usually not difficult to find a restroom, but finding a clean one can sometimes be a challenge. For emergency moments where you have to use an unpleasant restroom, keep an emergency toilet kit handy with your own roll of TP and some sanitizing wipes would not recommend. If you're the driver of an older vehicle, this is especially for you. Jumpstart kits make it easy to charge your battery without the need of anybody else. Portable pumps will give you the power you need when you're low on tire pressure. And you can dial in the exact pressure you need for your tires. Or go with a two-in-one air compressor and jump starter kit. 
These are a road trip must and also charge them before you hit the road. I keep a small inverter in my car just in case I need a standard power outlet. And that other end just goes in your power outlet. Let this be your sign to get a portable vacuum for your car. Now I love a clean car and this thing helps pick up all those crumbs in between washes. And with a variety of attachments, get into all those crevices. Take an old large container, got a little produce bag, sealed up, airtight, nothing's falling out. Now I have a little place I can collect all that trash and debris. Any accessory in my car, I love to keep organized. I just have a cheap tech pouch. I keep all my chargers and adapters in here. All those little bits and pieces you need for your car, all in one place. 